The new Canadian Solar EPQ battery system. Is this the best DC coupled energy storage system on the market? We're going to be answering that question and telling you all about this exciting new product in today's video. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past 10 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean, renewable energy. Now if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge you're going to find expert reviews of solar panels, batteries, inverters, generators, uh, EV chargers, pretty much any product or technology that makes up a home renewable energy system. You're also going to find new product announcements like today's video here. In today's video, we're taking a look at the brand new EPCube Home Energy Storage System, which is the result of a collaboration between Eternal Planet and Canadian Solar. So Eternal Planet is where the EP branding comes from. And basically, the system is comprised of two main components, which you see pictured here. The EPCube Gateway for Whole House Backup, as well as the EPCube hybrid inverter with integrated battery storage. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is a DC coupled battery storage system, meaning that the interface between the solar PV and the battery storage happens on the DC side of the system before any, any inversion happens. And so for those of you who have been following this category, you'll know that um, a DC coupled system offers more efficient battery charging and battery storage, especially when you're operating in an off-grid mode, because you can take DC direct current directly from your solar modules and send it directly to the battery to charge first without having to do DC to AC and then back to DC conversions the way you would with a microinverter or with an AC coupled battery system. So the Canadian Solar EP Cube is a DC coupled system. However, it does offer an option to allow you to AC couple if you're using this to add storage to an existing solar power system. Uh, but I'll get into more of that in the future. Now, as I said, the system is comprised of the two main components here, the gateway and the hybrid inverter with battery storage. Now, if you look at the inverter unit here, the top of the unit is your actual inverter and then you can stack one or many battery storage cells to achieve the desired amount of battery storage, anywhere from 9 kilowatts up to 19.9 kilowatt hours of battery storage. Now in terms of power rating, each inverter assembly is rated for 7.6 kilowatts of AC output power. And that, that 7.6 kilowatts is a size that you're going to see pretty frequently. And the reason for that is that it's the maximum AC system size that can be backfed via a circuit breaker that can be backfed into a standard 200 amp electrical panel, which is what you're going to find in most U.S. homes. And so the, the way the code is in the U.S., we can overload the panel up to 20%. So if it's a 200 amp panel, we can backfeed with a 40 amp breaker. And so you're going to see that 7.6 kilowatt hour size on a lot of inverter systems, whether you're talking about Canadian Solar, SMA, Solar Edge, they pretty much all have a 7.6 kW version. I should put Generac in that category as well um, because it does allow for that 40 amp backfed breaker configuration. Now, for larger inverter systems, we generally have to do a more exotic type of interconnection. Uh, that's typically going to be a, a main breaker D-rate or a line side tap. But if you're looking for a clean, fast, code compliant install, using the 40 amp backfed breaker is one of the methods that you're going to see used very frequently. Now, in terms of DC input voltage, the Canadian Solar EP Cube Hybrid Inverter can take as little as 90 volts DC up to 500 volts DC input. And so of course what this allows you to do is to wire your solar PV strings at high voltage so it keeps the wiring nice and clean and fast on the roof. Generally you're going to see solar modules wired together in series of 8 to 12 solar modules per series and then each string or each series circuit can be brought down to connect to your hybrid inverter. 
Uh, and I should mention, the inverter off offers up to four MPPT strings or up to four MPPT channels. Now, in terms of scalability, the EPCube system also excels very well because on a single gateway, you can actually stack up to six hybrid inverter assemblies in parallel. Uh, and of course, when you're talking about this system, each inverter also is connected to a certain amount of storage. So I think what you're going to see here in the US, very common for a whole house backup, I think you're gonna see a two inverter system where each inverter is maxed out at the full 19.9 kilowatt hours of storage. And so remember, when you're parallel connecting multiple inverters, with this system, you're increasing total max output power as well as total storage capacity. So up to six inverter units can be connected on a single gateway here for whole house. Now, let's talk more about the gateway. Uh, I've mentioned that the gateway is designed for a whole house backup, and as such, it does provide for a full 200 amp pass-through. So you have 200 amp busing in the gateway, which of course could pass through a full 200 amp grid service coming in. But then when operating in backup mode would allow you to, to have up to 200 amps of backup power as well, depending on how many inverter systems are connected to the gateway. Now, in addition to the pass through, you also have two 100 amp smart circuit controls. Now, those controls could be used for controlling electric vehicle chargers, for example, but one of those smart circuit controls is actually bi-directional. So, for example, you could use it to AC couple to an existing solar PV system if you want to be able to charge the battery not just from your new solar but from an existing solar PV system. Uh, another use case would be if you have a fuel burning generator. You could allow AC input to come in on one of those smart circuits, uh, smart controlled circuits, and then be able to use that AC power source as an auxiliary means of charging your battery. Uh, so again, if you're preparing for a long-term grid down event or for totally off-grid operation, I, I always say having that generator hookup option is something that you really ought to consider because in most parts of the country, you're gonna hit a bad patch of weather a couple of weeks per year where the solar panels by themselves are not going to be able to keep up with recharging the battery. So having that generator hookup option where you can fire the generator up and run it for three or four hours and then bring your batteries back full and then you can shut the generator off and go back to running off battery power. So it gives you a third option. It also helps you stretch your generator fuel supply a lot longer than if you had to run the generator only as your backup power source. Now, these two smart circuits, again, one of them being bi-directional, also leaves the door open, potentially, for a number of future enhancements. Um, the first is gonna be just smart load control within the home. And again, for those of you who've been following this category for a while, one of the key components of a successful whole home battery backup implementation is what we call intelligent load management. And very simply, that's the ability to have the system power down certain high draw but non-essential loads so that if the battery is draining down, it'll help you conserve the energy in the battery. So for example, a typical heavy load to be managed would be your central air conditioning unit. Um, it might be fine if you're on backup power and it's daylight hours, you have plenty of sunshine coming in. Well, if fine, in that case, go ahead, run the air conditioner, you know, you don't really have to conserve. But let's say you've been running on backup power for a couple of days and the weather's been overcast. And so now your batteries are starting to drain down. Do you really need to run the air conditioning overnight? If that's gonna potentially drain out your battery overnight and it would black out the house? Or could we power down perhaps the air conditioner, maybe some other large non-essential loads like the clothes dryer, for example, if you have an electric clothes dryer. If you can power those couple of items down, then it'll help you conserve and, and stretch the battery and just get more running time out of the battery um, until the next day when the sun comes up and can take over. So the door is open here potentially for smart load control in the future. Um, the other thing, and again, for those who've been following the channel, the other thing we've been talking about a lot this year is bi-directional EV charging. So we know that a number of the manufacturers have promised a bi-directional EV charging capability. So by one of those smart circuits being bi-directional, potentially we could see a bi-directional EV charger integration 
in the future. Um, but as for now, what you can do with those two smart circuits, you can do EV charging, you can do generator hookup, and you can do AC coupling to an existing solar PV system. Now, the EP-Cube system has three basic operating modes. Um, the first mode, of course, is backup power. And what backup power or backup mode means is that the battery will always keep a certain percentage charged in the battery so that it's ready to go in the case of a power outage. So that way you know no matter what, if you lose grid power, you're going to be starting with at least a battery that's charged to a threshold that you set, say 80% or 90%. So you always know that you're starting with an adequate battery reserve. Now, for those of you out there who are on a one-for-one -one net metering plan, um, backup mode is probably the mode that you're going to run the battery most times because there's not really going to be an advantage of consuming your battery every day if you don't have to. If the utility will give you credits for your excess solar, you don't really have to worry about saving your excess solar because you can just pull it back from the grid when you need it and that way your batter battery is fresh, ready to go in the event of a power outage. Now, the second mode is self-consumption mode. And self-consumption mode is designed really for people that, that cannot take advantage of a true one-for-one -one net metering program. And so with self-consumption mode, essentially what you're telling the system is, I want to use my solar and battery first, and I only want to use the grid as a last resort. So self-consumption mode allows you to power the home on solar during daylight hours. Uh, you can sort of directly consume the solar during daylight hours. Uh, any excess solar is then charged into the battery, so you have a reserve of energy available during the evening. And then only once the needs of the house are fully met and the battery is fully charged, then the excess would get sold back to the power company for any credit that they might offer. So that self-consumption mode is really going to help for those of you who cannot take advantage of net metering and you still want to get the best dollar for dollar payback in your solar plus storage investment. And then finally, the third operating mode is the time of use mode. And the time of use mode is for those individuals that have a utility rate plan where the rate changes based on the time of day. Uh, we see this a lot in Southern California. We see it sometimes in Arizona. And basically what these time of use plans look like is during the hours when the grid is having the most demand on it, which is typically late afternoon, early evening when air conditioners are running the hardest, uh, there's a, a higher peak rate that the utility will charge you than for the off-peak rate, right? Sometimes they even have a, a third option, which is like a super off-peak rate, which is usually like midnight to 6 a.m. So a lot of you with electric vehicles where you can program it, a lot of you will charge your electric vehicle in the middle of the night when you're on your super off-peak rate. But anyway, what the time of use mode allows you to do is to prioritize self-consumption from the battery, but only during certain time windows. So as opposed to self-consuming as much as possible all the time, the time of use mode allows you to prioritize self-consumption during hours that you can program. Again, typically it's late afternoon, early evening, like 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. so that you can avoid having to pull from the grid during those hours. Well, folks, this has been a brief introduction to the brand new Canadian Solar EP-Cube hybrid energy storage system. Um, if you'd like to get some pricing or purchase one of the units here, be sure to check in with your top solar distributors like CED Renewables, uh, I believe Signature Solar is carrying this product now as well, as well as the other top nationwide distributors I would expect would be picking it up here in the next month or so. Uh, folks, of course, if you're in the process of looking at solar plus storage options for your home, if you need to get a price quote on Canadian Solar or on any of the other leading solar and storage systems, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us on the link below here, set up a quick Zoom call with me or with one of our experts here, and we'd be happy to talk through the options and provide some pricing for you. Now, of course, if you're getting good value from the videos that you see on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up uh, and also hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this, they'll come up on your homepage and come up on your feed so you can stay up to date with us. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. Uh, I thank you for spending some time with Solar Surge. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.